during Prohibition, when I was a teenager, <coughs> uh, Prohibition was repealed in 1933 when I was 21 years old. So I was a teenager during most of Prohibition. Alcohol was readily available. Bootlegging was common. Any idea that alcohol prohibition was keeping people from drinking was absurd. There were speakeasies all over the place. But more than that, we had this spect spectacle of Al Capone, of the hijackings, of the gang wars. Anybody with two eyes to see could see that this was a bad deal, that you were doing more harm than good. Now, it's in addition, I became an economist. And as an economist, I came to recognize the importance of markets and of free choice and of consumer sovereignty and came to discover the harm that was done when you interfered with it. The effect of criminalization and making drugs criminal is to drive people from mild drugs to strong drugs. In what way? Well, you make, take marijuana. marijuana is a very heavy, bulky substance, and therefore it's relatively easy to interdict. The, uh, the warriors on drugs have been more successful in interdicting marijuana than, let's say, cocaine. So marijuana prices have gone up. They've become harder to get. There's been an incentive to grow more potent marijuana, and people have been driven from marijuana to heroin or cocaine or one of the other, or crack, one of the other drugs. Let us consider another drug then, and that is the drug crack, yeah. crack cocaine. Crack would never have existed, in my opinion, if you had not had drug prohibition. It was drug prohibition. Well, why, did, why was crack created? Because cocaine was so expensive. I see America with half the number of prisons, half the number of prisoners, 10,000 fewer homicides a year, inner cities in which there's a chance for these poor people to live without being afraid for their lives, respect citizens who are now, uh, citizens who might be respectable who are now addicts, not being subject to becoming criminals in order to get their drug, being able to uh, get drugs for which they're sure of the quality, The role of the government is to protect the drug cartel. That's literally true. Is it doing a good job with it? Excellent. Why, what do I mean by that? In an ordinary free market business, let's take potatoes, beef, anything you want, there are thousands of importers and exporters. Anybody can go into the business. But the drug, but, but it's very hard for a small person to go into the drug importing business because our interdiction efforts essentially make it enormously costly. So the only people who can survive in that business are these large metal and cartel kind of people who have enough money so they can have fleets of airplanes, so they can have sophisticated methods, so on. So in effect, in addition to which, by keeping goods out by, and by arresting, let's say, local marijuana growers, the government keeps the price of these products high. So what more could a monopolist want? The one negative feature of legalizing drugs is that there might be some additional drug addicts. However, I want to qualify that in still another one. The child who shot in a slum in a, in a pass-by shooting, in a random shooting, is an innocent victim in every respect of the term. The person who decides to take drugs for himself is not an innocent victim. He has chosen himself to be a victim. Mm -hmm. And I must say, I have very much less sympathy for him. Let I us am turn not willing, I am not willing to impose, I do not think it is moral, to impose heavy costs on other people, to protect people from their own choices. And is, it, is it not true that the entire discussion here, the entire drug problem is an economic problem. To no, it's not an economic problem at all. It's a moral problem. In what way? The economics part of it is, I'm an economist, but the economics problem is strictly tertiary. It's a moral problem. It's a problem of the harm which government is doing. Look, I have estimated statistically that the drug, prohibition of drugs produces on the average 10,000 additional homicides a year 
It's a moral problem that the government is going around killing 10,000 people. It's a moral problem that the government is making into criminals. People doing something you and I don't approve of, but who are doing something that hurts nobody else. Most of the arrests for drugs are for possession by casual users. Now, here's somebody who wants to smoke a cigarette, uh, or a, a, a joint, a marijuana cigarette. If he's caught, he goes to jail. Now, is that moral? Is that proper? I think it's absolutely disgraceful that our government, supposed to be our government, should be in the position of converting people who are not harming others into criminals, of destroying their life, putting them in jail. I don't see that's the issue to me. Look, if you write the case for prohibiting uh, 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 drugs is exactly as strong, as strong and as weak as a case for prohibiting people from overeating. We all know that overeating causes more deaths than, than drugs do. Why can't why why isn't it perfect if it's if it's if it's in print okay for the government to say you must not consume drugs because they do you harm? Why isn't it all right to say you must not eat too much because you harm? Why isn't it all right to say you must not try to go in for skydiving because you're likely to die? Why isn't it all right to say, Oh, skiing, that's no good. That's a very dangerous sport. You'll hurt yourself. Where do you draw the line? What scares you the most about the notion of drugs being legal as Nothing like scares alcohol. me about the notion of drugs being legal. Nothing. What scares me is the notion of continuing on the path we're on now, which will destroy our free society.